wish I had bees. There you go. Did you literally just say you wish you had bees? Yeah. I'm playing Minecraft. I could use bees. Oh. oh. <laughs> Let's see. Those are uh th those are uh, pictures of. If I'm not mistaken, those are pictures from near. Uh, oh, I forget the name of it. It's like a town. In yeah, I think in Pennsylvania where. Uh, basically an underground coal mine caught fire and there's just constantly fire going on they were super careful but it still lit on fire and they're like well maybe it'll only burn for a little still burning yeah it's still currently burning so if this is like implying that that is caused by cert yeah. uh <laughs> um well actually it says at the bottom picture it says noxious gas rising from a sink sinkhole in area 179 Chemical analysis suggests some of these were the breath of SP-1179. Okay, yeah. So so what it sounds like to me is Cert is really pissed off and living underneath Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, I, I would say probably, I think continent is the most appropriate here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it hasn't shown that it wants to destroy the world. Nah, but like, well, at the very, I, I guess in this case, we have to ask, like, uh, how much of, like, Norse lore do we put upon this SCP version of Cert? Because you gotta keep in mind, Cert was uh one of the main entities uh associated with Ragnarok. Right. The downfall of the gods. In other words, he could cause a lot of damage depending on whether he's just like an amorphous not really thinking being or has a certain level of intelligence like Cert from Norse mythology. So I would like to comment, we still don't know how much of Ragnarok was created by those who believed in the faith and those, and how much was created by Christians. Oh yeah, like, yeah, I yeah, like that's always a factor there, but like basing it upon generally common perceptions of Norse mythology as we have it now. Yeah. Like, either way, Cert is a bad dude. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think continent is a good place to put it. Yeah, for now. I, I feel like if, I feel like if this thing actually has the level of malevolence as Cert, yeah, like, then it would probably go to XK. But as of right now, it just sounds like a really angry fire deity hanging out under Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> it would be a lot funnier if it was under Florida. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hey, we're already on Satan's dick. We don't need any more of that shit. Dragon. What? You know what? Look at it. Pennsylvania has its eternal, ever burning fire that they're convinced will eventually go out, but. Let's face it, there's no signs of it slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. Either way, uh, I gotta say, like, some of my favorite SCPs are ones that pull off of actual ass events and, like, mm -hmm. add, like, a certain level of mysticism to real-world situations. So I can definitely appreciate the uh, SCP universe retconning of this disaster in Pennsylvania actually being fucking cert. <laughs> who is on to to be to be clear is on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean from where the Norse lived, but you know it's, what? I have a theory. The motherfucker came for a vacation and is stuck in Pennsylvania. Uh, <laughs> of all the places, the to man, get stuck the in. man was touristing and he got stuck. 
<laughs> fell in a hole. Can't get himself out. So now he's just really pissed. <laughs> he's like, I'm all powerful and shit, and I got stuck in a goddamn hole in fucking Pennsylvania. The more, the most oh, insulting part is really you got stuck in Pennsylvania. Uh, what are you trying to say there, Jerry? I, I was saying, I will admit, coal mines can get very deep. Oh, yeah. I How mean, like, most coal... Search? Well... Like, uh, big... I forget. Dirt is a Jotun. It, and those Norse are big motherfuckers. Yeah, generally within Norse <laughs> mythology, but simultaneously <laughs> we're like... We we are necessarily trying to apply real world physics to an incorporeal uh, entity mm-hmm. in terms of like Norse mythology, like the gods weren't literally physical. Mm-hmm. I have an so, idea. Like... <laughs> he gave it to Pennsylvania to him. This is like like. You know how you get stuck in a hole and it's like half your body? He's just trying to fucking climb out of a hole that's like slightly above his neckline and he fucking can't get out of the goddamn hole. <laughs> He's you just... Is, and the fact that the those cracks were created from underneath, his face is probably buried underneath the ground. It was like created by him like breathing at, in the hole like at this place. The only thing keeping Sirt from enacting Ragnarok is the is the fact that he got trapped underground in Pennsylvania. <laughs> this is the real risk of touristing in America. Oh my god, I love Getting this. Trapped mm. as a as something above a god in a hole that you can't get out of because it's so deep, and so you start destroying the city it's above. Yeah, he just, like, gets super pissed, like, uh, like, just spewing hot steam all over the place, trying to get out, and you just have no headway. He's just like, making the hole larger. Like, at first, just, it was just, like, a hole, you know, slightly above his neckline, like, kind of up to his chin. He kept fucking jumping, and it got deeper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, his body weight caused it to <laughs> gradually get deeper. There were fucking deeper. earthquakes in fucking Pennsylvania, and they're like, what the fuck is going on? It's just fucking Sir trying to get out of the hole. Uh, this one was fun. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> on to the next SCP, which is a joke SCP called Standards. Oh, no, not Standards. Horrifying. I don't want to listen to this one. Yeah. SCP-1212-J is an indestructible ivory bracelet with diameter of 10 centimeters by two, uh, 2 centimeters. That thick with two extremely sharp spikes directly pour to each other pointing outwards from the center. Inspection reveals that it is a single unaltered piece of the bone, leading researchers to believe that it is a notch from a spinal column of currently unknown creature. SP-1212-J contains trace amounts of dark matter within the bone. It is unknown at this time whether this is the cause of its anomalous effects. Effects. Are you- I don't know why my voice fucking changed for no fucking reason. But anyway. Uh, when coming within one meter of SP-1212-J, subjects with no prior knowledge of its effects experience a strong repulsion to wear it. When placed on any limb of the body, SP-1212-J's spikes will turn inward and the bracelet itself will contract to kind of tightly around the limb. Subjects will simply report extreme pain following the impalement of the limb and at this point will attempt to remove SP-1212-J. It is impossible to remove SP-1212-J following impalement. I gotta ask, do we need to mention that this is going to hurt like hell? <laughs> like, no. you, it's a torture bracelet contracts on my arm. And this this feels like pretty obvious. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah. Over the course of three hours, the subject's spinal 
notches will become hollow and widen to a diameter of 10 centimeters. Two spikes will grow on each knot. When three hours have elapsed, each spinal notch will detach itself from the subject by rotating at a speed of 2,000 RPM. All spinal notches are identical in appearance and effect to the original instance of SB1212 J, save for two details. May contain no dark matter. If the original instance of SB1212 J is not born within 12, 28 days of last detachment, all instances will spontaneously teleport to a random limb of nearby persons. Yeah, that's it. How is this a joke, SCP? I don't, I don't get the joke. This just sounds terrifying. Oh wait, hold on. There's there's a note. Due to possible psychic effects discovered during staff interviews following Incident 1212 data containment and research on SP 1212 is to be undertaken solely by junior researchers and other personnel who still think Abel is the coolest fucking. SPC we have, as they appear to be immune. I feel like that doesn't clear anything up. That just makes me more confused. This thing's weird. definitely doesn't sound like a joke device. It sounds like a torture device that I'd never want on me. Yeah, like this. Wait! Oh! This could be making fun of the Jade Ring. You know, the one that makes you immune to 049? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh. Gotcha. Okay. I forgot well. some joke SCPs are like that, where they make fun of other SCPs. Okay, that makes quite a bit more sense. Either way, um, what this leaves me with is just, like, didn't it mention that it, if, if it hasn't been worn for a while, it'll just start having instances of itself appear on other persons around it? Yeah, all instances will spontaneously teleport to a random limb of nearby persons. Yeah, okay, that is, that could be very dangerous. Um, but I still think only certain group because it takes a long time for this contagion of sorts to spread. Yeah. You know, for a joke SCP, I thought it was going to be a lot more popular. Yeah, I, I just, I was just mostly confused. And then we realize it's just making fun of the jade ring. Yeah. Well, I guess that's probably a part of why I'm confused. I don't know much about that SCP. Basically, the jade ring, it, make, it makes you, like, really exhausted and slow, but it makes you immune to diseases. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I remember that. Which is why it makes you immune to 049. Zero. The plague doctor. Ah, uh, right, right. Gotcha. I have heard better joke SCPs. That's all I will say. <laughs> uh, Do you want to know a funny joke? No, dragon. Anyway, okay. this SCP has a really fitting name for being a Keter. <laughs> it's called okay. the Lunatic. Let me guess, it's Luna and then Tick. No. Oh. It's like it's pronounced Lunatic, but it's like two different words type thing. That's how Luna Oh my gosh, Dragon. Jerry cut out, I don't know what he said. I said that's how lunatics always pronounce. It's just a word. It has nothing to do with the moon or ticks. Although that could be an interesting SCP. I think Make, it would be like, a cheater, though. Yeah, it probably wouldn't be a cheater, but still, like, like, like an anomalous species of tick that only moves around under the moon. Yeah. All right. 
can't just be werewolves. No. Werewolf ticks. No. Anyway. <laughs> Lycanthropic ticks. <laughs> anyway, on with Sorry. the SCP. SCP-1233 is a humanoid entity of unknown comp compulsion which visually resembles an individual wearing an EMU square tight spacesuit with opaque vi uh, uh, visor and attached extra vehicle propulsion jetpack. The equipment worn by SP-1233 exhibits a number of anomalous properties. The suit itself has shown durability far exceeding that of a standard spacesuit. SCP-1233 has to date withstood small arms fires, anti-tank munitions, landmines, white phosphorus munitions, and in one instance, total submersion in magma without sustaining any observable damage or decrease in functionality. Sorry, just real quick. That escalated fucking quickly. <laughs> it, it went from small arms fires, so like we're thinking like 45 caliber pistol, okay, to anti tank fire. What? <laughs> <laughs> like it went it went from one of the most standard, like self defense based calibers imaginable to Literally one of the largest calibers in warfare. Okay. Like, did like, did, like, like, did someone, like, shoot at him with their M1911 and then, like, say, oh, damn, my 45 didn't work. The next logical option is to get it, is to get an anti-tank rifle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway. Sorry, I just found that to be particularly weird. <laughs> the suit material is also opaque to all attempt forms of penetrative scanning up to and including ultrasonic, radio, microwave, and x-ray emitters. The entity's jetpack, while ostensibly designed to be pr practical only in low-gravity orbital conditions, empowered by compressed nitrogen, instead appears to utilize some form of anomalously high-powered rocket propulsion system. This device can substantially generate thrust capable of rapid accelerating the entity to a maximum of surf velocity of approximately 40,500 km per hour, and it can alter SB 1233's trajectory in any directions at speed and rates of acceleration slash deceleration that will be instantly fatal to any human. SV-1233's physical strength is correspondingly anomalous. It has demonstrated the ability to lift and throw objects weighing up to 65,000 kilograms and can do so repeatedly without showing any external signs of fatigue in defiance of multiple physical laws. SB-1233 is capable of communicating through a loudspeaker installed in its suit and does so in a loud, somewhat gradual eloquent and reclamatory male voice, demonstrating fluency in a number of languages and adjusting its speech to conform to whatever language is most commonly spoken by the surrounding populace. Its statements are generally coherent in structure, but are frequently rambling, oblique, irrelevant, to the present situation or lacking discernible context. SP-1233's behavior is erratic, unpredictable, gregarious, cordial, and somewhat destructive, though its appearances are typically brief and infrequent, with sightings occurring once, only once per four to five years. In SV-1233 Revel event will begin with the entity falling from an unknown height from the Earth's surface, generally at a terminal velocity comparable to that of a small meteorite or atmospheric re-entry vehicle. SV-1233 will exhibit the red-orange thermal radiance typical of these objects as a result of atmospheric friction, and as such, SV-1233 is commonly mistaken for a meteorite or shooting star during its descent. It will then crash land causing a minor localized seismic event and sizable impact crater. 
in almost all cases, SP-1233 has landed a moderate distance away from the outer limits of, po of a population center, usually a small to mid-sized town with a population not exceeding 30,000. It will then climb out of the crater and travel toward the nearby town, either via flight or on foot. Its route to the population center is usually not direct. SP-1233 will frequently stop to engage in various activities, seemingly at random. Examples of observed detour behaviors include inspecting various objects such as farm equipment, buildings, and plants, standing still for variable amounts of time, chasing small insects such as grasshoppers and butterflies, attempting to greet, converse with, or integrate animals such as livestock and birds, Pulling up root vegetables or picking fruit from bushes slash trees and pres pressing them forcefully into its closed fire visor in an apparent attempt to eat them. Marching directly into bodies of water such as ponds and lakes. Among others, normally not resulting in significant property damage. Upon reaching the town limits, SB 1233 will engage in further activities which, due to its curiosity, appearance, extreme physical strength, and lack of understanding of human societal conventions, will generally result in civil unrest and destruction of public and private property. While others observe behaviors, uh, oh, observed behaviors that include wandering into traffic due to its anomalous properties has resulted in lethal collisions, breaking through glass storefronts to handle or inspect wares on display, challenging a fire hydrant to single combat which it then destroy via punching, stealing and gathering unintended bicycles, forming a pile of hundreds in the center of a public park, stacking parked cars on top of one another, collecting as many dogs as possible, attempting to use them as currency to purchase more dogs. And more, SV-1233 exploits, invariably result in local authorities being summoned by the citizenry. However, attempts to, to by employees to impede, detain, or arrest SB-1233 are entirely ineffective and are ignored by the entity in the majority of cases. To date, SB-1233 has not caused overt or direct harm to any civilian, though casualties and fatalities have occurred as a result of its unpredictable behavior and physical properties. After spending a variable amount of time within a given municipality, SP-1233 will abruptly activate its jetpack and ascend directly upward, reaching a steep velocity and exiting Earth's atmosphere with greater speed than any non-anomalous vehicle on record. Ground-based and orbital telescope observation of recent SP-1233 departures have shown that its general outbound trajectory is consistent during each event. SP-1233 ex exits Earth's orbit and maintains velocity while adjusting course directly towards the moon. At its average speed of roughly 40,500 km per hour, the entity enters lunar orbit within, within approximately 9 hours. It will overshoot slightly and adjust course, passing out of view and presumably either demanifesting, I mean, demanifesting somehow or landing on the far side of the moon. None of SP-1233's claims regarding the moon have been successfully verified since SP-1233's initial appearance on February 6, 1986. Foundation research. Divisions have maintained constant surveillance of the moon in an attempt to acquire concrete proof of its statements. No evidence indicating the existence of a moon kingdom, moon people, moon monsters, or any other moon-based extra normal objects or entities mentioned by SB-1233 has ever been found. Terrestrial research personnel have maintained continual contact with Lunar Area 32 personnel research station Supervisors concerning all aspects of SP-1233 since its initial registry, hypothesizing that Area 32's powerful and comprehensive Sentinel array would be capable of confirming or refuting 
SC-1233's allegations with ease. Not only have Lunar Base personnel consist consistently failed to uncover any indication that SCP-1233's assertions are authentic in any way, but no anomaly or object matching SCP-1233's description has ever been reported by Sentinel's hundreds of detectors despite the existence of multitude of Earth-based te telescopic video recordings, which clearly show SCP-1233 entering the inner bound of Sentinel's optical sensor range and flying directly over Lunar Area 32. Lunar personnel are, were only made aware of, of the entity's existence by the SP registry upon terrestrial command requests that they transmit all data concerning SPCP 1233's first appearance to Earth for storage and analysis. Three hours following this entity's disappearance, no such data existed. No definitive explanation for its optional discrepancy has been found. And there you go. It's just a socially awkward dude who doesn't know how dangerous he is. That lives on the moon, apparently. I... I have no words. Moon man! This Maybe one confuses me. An alternate universe where there's an actual moon kingdom. Maybe. Maybe he has a ocean boyfriend waiting uh, for hold him. Hold on. Would you like to hear the first thing he ever says to a person? Mm. Oh yes, please. Oh dear. Oh, no. uh, this is to a little girl, by the way. That oh. this was found. Oh no. Greetings, little girl. I am. Moon Champion, Champion of the Moon, Defender of Space Justice, and Destroyer of Evil. I have come once again to, to your charming world to learn more of your strange culture and to seek aid for my people in their ongoing war against the moon monsters. You appear to possess a vast wealth of the fabled nutrients and moisture for which this world is known throughout the galaxy. Are you the president of this planet? <coughs> Awkward, awkward tourist. I love him. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hatchet has now have a new favorite SCP. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a socially awkward, ignorant alien guy who wants oh, to, dude. who has like this childlike fascination with Earth. Yep. I. Oh my God. I. Okay, so this guy can cause harm, but I think because it's unintentional, I think it's appropriate to put him in spood tier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. He's just a guy vibing. Yeah, like, he's not going to be a threat to anyone except by his own stupidity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the moon champion. You're probably going to add that to your deck, aren't you? The moon champion. <laughs> oh, I... Uh, give me a moment. I'll go add that right now to the you should, like, you should, standard you head, should, head pack. You should add the entire, like, speed he has. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, I should do that. Bright, please uh, send yeah, me I, this I SCP will. and DMs. Yeah. I'm going to add this to my non-cryptid pack. I'm tempted to add it to the cryptid pack just for the fuck of it, but I don't think that would be thematically appropriate. Do it. Do it. Oh. If you think oh. about it, SCPs are technically cryptids in, in no. a weird way. No, they're really not. Well, some of them technically are derived from cryptids. I mean, if you think about Bigfoot. Well, yeah, yeah some of them are Derived. In any sense of the way. They're just they're just an awkward alien. Like technically aliens are a subset of cryptozoology, but that's referring to real world. This right. would be like if I decide to add Slenderman, because there's some people that actually believe in Slenderman, i.e. children. Uh like it's it's not an actual cryptid. Yeah. Also, apparently it had 
it's been recently changed and has two different classes besides Keter. Mm -hmm. Disruption class, Eki, and risk class, Danger. Hmm. What the fuck is Eki? Eki. Is it anything like, like the Eki? word Eki? I love falling to my death. Isn't that what you do commonly in real life? No. Okay, hold on. Eki. High potential to disrupt the general population. Disruption is typically widespread, affecting major metropolitan areas or con countries. That's what Eki means. Okay, yeah, that sounds appropriate. He's not meaning to do anything wrong, but yeah, he definitely causes disruption. Disruption's practically his middle name. Also, this next SV also has a perfect name for what it is. Mm -hmm. An abandoned fact, a bakery. Abandoned ba bakery. Abandoned bakery? Yep, an abandoned bakery. As Why were you so insistent on nearly saying factory? Because of that one factory SCP and it gets stuck in my mind. You mean mm -hmm. that's literally the beginning of all the SCP Foundation? Yes. Yeah, like one of the 001 proposals. Yep. We're in the thousands. Hush. <laughs> Good job, Bright. Anyway, everyone, please give a slow round of applause for the person who's named after a character from the SCP Foundation. To be fair, it was one of the original uh, proposals. Yeah. yeah. When it was five instead of like a bunch. Yeah. Either way, go ahead. All right. I'm done being condescendingly mean. SCP-1234 right. is the former premises of Schmidt's Swiss Patries, a bakery and tea room that operated in Chicago, Illinois, from 1947 to 2003. The interior of SCP-1234 remains fully furnished and possesses working electricity, hot and cold w running water, and natural gas. SCP-1234 ovens and kitchen equipment remain fully functional though appearing to be in a severe state of disrepair due to age and neglect all attempts to remove or disconnect sp 1234s kitchen equipment or utilities have been unsuccessful under normal circumstances sp cp 1234 is inert on an irregular basis ranging from an observed minimum of two days to an observed Maximum of 17 months. At 12, 12 days, SCP-1234 becomes active. Prior to, be, to becoming fully active, SCP-1234 estimates a warm-up period lasting from 12 to 36 hours. Phenomena is it indicating the onset of an SCP-1234 event include heavy electromagnetic functions from within a 100 meter radius of site 602. Interference and malfunctioning of monitoring equipment, electrical blackouts slash brownouts on the city block site 602 is located on, lights and electrical devices within SCP-1234 activating and deactivating spontaneously, unexplained disappearances of humans and animals within a 300 meter radius of site 602, and redacted. SCP-1234 will become fully active within no more than 36 hours of uh, commencement of, of the warm-up phase to date. Active phase has always indicated between the hours of 2300 and 330 local time. Once fully active, SCP-1234's windows become fully opaque. 
All doors and windows become completely impenetrable, and all monitoring equipment located within SP-1234 ceases to fl function. All attempts to enter SP-1234 during an active phase have failed, and no persons inside SP-1234 when an active phase commences has been found alive at its conclusion. Active phase have been documented at to last from 4 to 10 hours, but will always conclude by 9 o'clock local time. Upon the conclusion of active phase, the shelves, counters, tables, and display cases of SCP-1234 will have been stocked with approximately 200 to 500 freshly baked shortbread crust pies designated SCP-1234-1. All instances of SCP-1234-1 measure 22.8 centimeters in diameter and weigh approximately 0.75 kilograms each. Pies produced by SV1234 will make use of any biological in ingredients provided to it, whether living or not at the time of the event, including fruits and vegetables, non-edible plants, insects, fish, poultry, red meat, and human beings. SV1234 will not, however, make use of any ingredients that are spoiled, stale, or are of unsatisfactory condition for use in baking. Instances of SPCP 1234 1 will not be recycled into new instances when a new event begins. All instances of SP 2434 1 are at the time of discovery, cooled to room temperature, contained in a disposable aluminum pipe plate, and covered with a transparent plastic lid aside from the means by which they are produced. SP-1234-1 bear no anomalous properties and may be eaten safely providing that the ingredients used in its manufacture are safe to eat. On 17 occasions since our observation began, instances of SP-CP-1234-1 have been found outside SCP-1234 following conclusion of active phase. On all such occasions, the pies were found on the shelves of supermarkets, convenience stores, and other food vendors within a 5-kilometer radius of SV-1234, and have been labeled with a UPC readable by the vendor's point-of-sale system. No determination has been made as to how these pies were transported from SVCP-1234 to the locations where they are found. If there is not a sufficient supply of ingredients available within SVCP-1234, when the activate phase commences, SVCP-1234 will consume ingredients stored outside of itself. Flour shortening and other biological matter is relocated into SVCP-1234, beginning with its closest matter available and being tracked from an increasingly greater distance until the necessary amount of ingredients has been acquired. The means by which material is acquired or transported into SCP-1234 is unknown due to the population density of the area in which SCP-1234 is located. No uncontained events have been allowed to occur since containment began. I mean, began. Foundation of containment of SCP-1234 began in 2006, following several reports of dozens of persons and animals disappearing with in the downtown Chicago area, local police traced the disappearances to the neighborhood in which SCP-1234 is located. Upon noticing an unusual scent, yes, baby. <sighs> the baby from the abandoned storefront, now identified as SCP-1234, police reached the front door and discovered approximately 7,300 instances of SCP-1234-1 within, many of which were several months of old and had spoiled. When police attempts to determine the identity of the persons responsible reached a dent in, a police liaison contacted the, the foundation, which assumed jurisdiction and following an additional event, which resulted in several more disappearances, placed SV-1234 under containment. Interviews with persons who worked at SCP-1234 prior to 2003 and with previous owners of 
Site 602 stated that the cause of its closing abruptly in April of that year was not known to them and that they have never observed any unusual or anomalous events occurring within the property prior to 2006. And that's it. That's just... Hi. That one's fucking weird. Hi. It's just a bakery that constantly wants to bake every so often. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's that's just how bakeries work? Did, did, Except did... it's technically not supposed to be operational and it sometimes uses humans as ingredients. That yeah. is just... And dogs. That's... It said pets so look oh, that yeah, shit true. just happens but like this is just a really fucking weird bakery also isn't there an entire fucking like horror movie i forget what it's called i know it starts with an s uh sweeney todd isn't that just sweeney todd like where they put humans into pies mm. Mm. Either way, since this is literally just a fucking building in a specific town, I say certain groups. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it sucks if you live in that town, but everyone else is fine. Yeah. I'm betting it takes place in fucking Utah. At least somewhere in Utah. Utah. It's always fucking Utah. It said it was in Chicago, Illinois. Fucking Illinois! It okay, that one makes sense. God damn fucking hmm. Illinois. Oh fuck. Does this have to do with Billy? Who? Billy. The cistern creature. Creeper. No, probably not. He lived in a well. And then he decided well, well, to well. He decided to go to the bakery and take over the bakery. Okay, so he's making a life for himself? That sounds nice, actually. He's making people into food. That happens! What is wrong with you? It's like, it's fucked up that that happens, but like, this is the SCP like universe we're talking about? That's normal? Left to go to the bathroom, and I hear <laughs> it's okay to turn people into food. No, it is not okay to turn people into food. Well, no, it is not okay to turn people into food. Uh, for many reasons, like we're, kind of like we're, talk we're talking. We're talking about the SCP, for, like oh, we're talking about the SCP universe. It this sounds is like the most like tame of things. It this still sounds like tame. you're. It it still sounds no, like you're defending other fucking Do not eat other people. Don't eat other people. It's bad they, for like a multitude of reasons and also like history and shit. Don't eat other people. But seeing as this is the SCP universe we're talking about. It's pretty fucking tame. Like, it's fucked up. But also, like... We're Penguin? missing a fucking lizard? Penguin? Like, I don't know. I'll have you know that I just murdered an ocelot. Okay? That is all. Oh, okay, I don't care. Like, that's mean, but okay. I will yeah, not it... let them eat my chickens. So, Good for you. Anyway. Yeah. The last SCP of the night will be the one called Epsilon Wave. Epsilon Wave. What it's a badass mean? name. What does it mean, though? Well, if Fuck you let I me read, know. I'll tell you. Okay. <laughs> right. Tell me now. <laughs> what does this mean? Shut the fuck up, both of you. Fuck you. SCP-1237 is a state of luck electrical activity in the human brain, observed in certain individuals during periods of extremely deep sleep. This state, informally dubbed level 5 sleep or epsilon wave sleep, is profoundly difficult to awaken the subject from prior to adoption of current containment protocols, experiments with loud noise, bright lights, chemical injections, electrical stimulation, oxygen deprivation, physical injury and mutilation and redacted have failed to uh, awaken the subject. The ability to exhibit SCP-1237 is controlled by a gene designated SCP-1237-1. 
SCP-1237-1 is present in approximately 0 point redacted percent of the total world population. However, this number is as high as 1 point redacted percent among redacted, 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 and redacted ethnic groups. Redacted percent of SCP-1237-1 positives experience at least one SCP-1237 event in their lives. Redacted percent experience two or more. The majority of SCP-1237 events occur when the subject is in their late teens to early 30s. Whereas SCP-1237-1 negative individuals do not exhibit REM activity during the deepest stages of sleep. SCP-1237-1 positives do. Dreams experienced during an SCP-1237 event are not of a significant different nature than dreams experienced by negatives. They may involve the dreamer participating in routine, routine daily activities, find them in impossible or illogical situations, or people they may or may not know behave uncharacteristically, or find them in scenarios most persons would find terrifying. As with ordinary dreams, the subject has no apparent control over the setting or events of the dream or their actions therein. When dreaming during an SCP-1237 state, however, the brainwaves responsible for REM activity and SCP-1237 activity interact to produce a real reality altering event. I mean effect, not event. After an SCP-1237 event occurs, any physical or mental changes that occur to the subject in the dream will occur to their awake waking form as well. If the dream involves persons or places that the subject has personally interacted with or visited, those persons and places will be altered as well in accordance with the nature of the dream. Imaginary persons or places or persons or places not personally known by the subject are not affected. Transformation and instantaneous in all cases that have been observed. In general, memories of people not involved in the dream are unaffected. People encountering persons affected by an SCP-1237 event will believe that the changes are correct and that the person has always been that way. However, they will have the memories that this is not the case. Attempts to reconcile this among witnesses to an SCP-1237 event tend to result in chronic uneasiness, paranoia, and redacted. Documented effects of SCP-1237 events have included loss of limbs and organs or spontaneous regeneration of limbs and organs previously lost. Complete and total changes in physical appearance, gender, personality, memories, age, or species. Acquisition of superhuman abilities, including the ability to fly, lift extremely heavy weights, weight uh, objects, survive without oxygen, or see through solid objects. Significant changes in the architecture and floor plans of buildings, of the light, layout of city streets, or of the appearance characteristics characteristics or names of landmarks. Changes in the outcome of historical events the subject was involved in, individuals returning to life several years after dying, the spontaneous transformation of national governments from one form to another, from a republic to a constitutional monarchy, or from a democratic confederation to an autocratic dictatorship, also redacted, and redacted are their two events. A very small percentage of SCP-1237-1 positives designated SCP-1237-1-L are capable of lucid dreaming. The ability to control the nature of their dreams, including those occurring in SCP-1237 events, to date only one SCP-1237-1-L has been identified by the Foundation. Okay, this is just 
a narcolepsy, but way stronger. And <laughs> I'm fairly certain that narcolepsy doesn't allow you to completely re to completely alter reality. Mm -hmm. right, that's why I said way stronger. Oh, okay, fair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I gotcha, I gotcha. It's, it's, it's if narc narcolepsy was your superpower. Yeah. Wait, does that mean I, I'm infected with the virus? Or whatever this fuck thing is? Probably. Yes, I have superpowers. Oh my god. But at what cost? Is it really is it really called a superpower? No. When you have no control over it. <laughs> Technically it can be. Uh, yeah, come to think of it, Azuku. Yeah, okay. That nightmare has come to life if you fall asleep. And it's the SEP. Oh, yeah. oh. You... oh fuck, is that where the Scarlet King came from? <laughs> oh yeah, Hatch. Remember, uh, uh, remember from like the X Men Rogue. I've uh, I've never watched the X Men. Can I tell a fact about Rogue? No. Okay. Sure. PT Foundation Dream, not X Men. Okay, but fun fact. I think it was okay. so. I think your pronounced name is Steek. It's the blue lady that can transform. Um, yes. So she is in the comics, is friends with this one lady. Quote unquote, I use friends in high quotations. Um, as in, like, they were roommates kind of way. Uh, <laughs> um, this is an SCP Foundation stream, not X-Men, and you just go on about X-Men. But, yeah, Rogue is Mystique's, I'm pretty sure, daughter in the comics. Adopted daughter, anyway. Let's yeah. get back to the stream. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, where? What danger level is this? This is XK. Yeah. I, I wouldn't think that because it's like a very low amount of the population is affected by this. Yes, a very low amount of the population is affected by this, but there's no way to stop it from, say, someone having a dream about post-apocalyptic Earth. Fair. Boom. So, uh, Hatchet brought up a good point. The Scarlet King literally could have been created from the minds of one of these people. Yeah, oh, like, uh, the, like, that is entirely possible. This is an reality bending phenomena that seemingly at the very least from what we can tell has no notable limits like yeah and you gotta keep in mind we're talking about humans humans think of some really fucked up shit i mean we're talking about the scp foundation i want to know what Very well be an end of the universe scenario possibly mm. Mm. yeah like, i i feel like that's less likely because, like, of the things that happen in dreams, people like, think dreams all the time, and they're not all good. Yeah, what if someone dreams about eating the entire universe and then that happens? Like, mm -hmm. don't, uh, don't say that very possible dream. Oh, gosh darn it. That sounds like a talk about the STP universe. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think ZK mm -hmm. is fair. Yeah. So it would like, also be just like a bunch of people that are into some weird stuff, and that's all they dream about, which but would be I hard. Think, I think the most disturbing aspect of this is the fact that the only conceivable way to eliminate this as a threat to all of mankind would be an act of mass genocide. <sighs> and even then, that's not that that might not actually take care of it. Yeah. And also uh genocide bad. Oh yeah, genocide bad, but in this case, like <sighs> Well, there's I'm, also I'm a thing I'm well, well I'm, like, I'm mass trying genocide to do... would pretty much Yeah. Like I'm trying to think of where my moral compass lands with a situation like this. Like we've got people who unbeknownst to them 
could fundamentally alter reality at any given point they go to sleep, including and not limiting to ending all of humanity, ending the universe. Like, even though those people have no intent to do harm, the sheer existence of them is such a massive threat to everyone else that I know how to... it is just disturbing. Wait, I know how to fix this. Okay, so the thing is, when you go to sleep, you don't automatically start dreaming. So there is a state before, I think it's REM uh, sleep, is when you start dreaming. So what if there's, just, like, they just have to take a medication where they cannot enter REM sleep and thus cannot dream? Well, no, the, the, the state of sleep where this stuff happens is anomalous. Hmm. Like, it just happens on its own. Meaning, your REM sleep or deep REM sleep? Yeah. It does not matter, it just happens. Like, this is one of the rare instances where I actually think that it would be morally justifiable to enact an act of genocide. Because mm. of the sheer actual physical danger that such a group in existence would cause. I don't like it, but you're right. Yeah, yeah like... Like, I don't... Everyone that has that gene where it's active, not inactive, how would you even test if it's active without them being asleep and doing things in their sleep? Well, if it's a gene, we can track said gene. Well, yes. Yeah, so we don't know if it's active. The gene has it set on active. Oh, you're yeah. right. Just because they have the... Okay. You can also check if the check if the gene is active or inactive. Oh. Yeah, and even then, if the gene is inactive, that means that if they have kids, the kids could have the gene active. Yeah. And like, keep in mind, I will I will clarify. I understand that this conclusion is very uncomfortable, but I think that given the logical extent of how much harm this could cause. I think that this is like literally the first time I have ever heard of a situation where I think genocide could be justified. It's list where there's very few SCPs on that list. There's like what five SCPs at this danger level so far. We've rated quite a few SCPs. That is not exactly a lot. Yeah, like uh, this one just makes me upset to think about. No, I think it's say... fictional. And like, and uh, sorry, just as a side note, I think it's very smart that the author specifically redacted what racial groups have this gene in them because that would just be a shitstorm of racism on the, uh, yeah, on the actual SCP wiki. And yet they do that on other site that they're that they say you should stay away from. Uh... Reddit. No, there was another site created by people who got upset about the pride it, symbol and everything. Yeah, it's oh, it's it's cool. the S C it's it's the it's the bigoted SCP members that were pissed off that the SCP community doesn't put up with bigotry. Yep. It's that group. So point being, it sickens me to say that we have actually found something that justifies genocide in this fictional world. Actually, I think there's another SCP that justified would be a genocide would be justifiable. Is if SCP-610 breaches containment. Because mm. that could cause wild... Seeing how it's constantly adapting, it could literally be extremely destructive. Well, in that case, generally speaking, I wouldn't consider, like, like let me let me put it this way: the United States government actually has a protocol to where, if a literal zombie virus breaks out, it is authorized to use a nuclear bomb on a city where that virus has broken out, and it is in unable to handle the situation in any other way. In that case, I don't consider it an act of genocide because it's it's basically the forced quarantine of an area to protect the rest of mankind while unfortunately coming at the sacrifice of anyone who's still in the area of the virus. Mm. 
Yeah, like it, yeah. like the motivation isn't to kill the living people. The motivation is to keep the virus from spreading. Yeah, but though I find it funny that how that literal virus nearly destroyed two sites and took over those sites. Yeah. Mm. Uh, this was a really depressing one to end on. Yeah. So I am kind of terrified by that because, like, it switched from virus to fungal infection. I'm kind of terrified to see where it's going to keep going. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, it's already began forming a church. Like, it's starting to develop sentience. And that's terrifying. <laughs> it's like the church of the broken god needs to evolve in order to keep being able to destroy those things. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Which is why I do kind of understand why one theory came to be, in which is a child of the Scarlet King that's supposed to bring an army was a, was a person who created 610. And that's why he keeps adapting and growing stronger. Yeah, that's an interesting... ...that refutes this uh, theory... The SCP about the forge, the something forge, I forgot its exact name, but literally in part of that SCP's lore, the Church of the Broken God speaks that 610 was created by the goddess of uh, instinct that was angry at people for not following their instincts and always listening to their brain. Right. Like, how dare you? I take that away. Take that away. I, I'm just imagining, like, just a lady, just like, just staring at all of humanity, just there, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like a disappointed, like a, like a disappointed parent. Yeah. Can't we be considered a parent when they're angry at us for evolving? No. I've. I've well, seen parents get angry if, at a lot of things. You'd be surprised. Yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if they're a parent, then they're an abusive parent. I think they're just a co-creator where one's like, you know, let them learn and grow, and the other one's like, fuck you, I gave you instincts for a reason. Listen to them. Yeah. That that well, is parents. Yeah, that that sounds like <laughs> that sounds like an abusive parent. Yeah. That sounds like my my, my birth giver. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like, I, I see what you're saying, Jira, with, with that canon thing. But, like, if that wasn't canon, I can totally see 610 being the army that was needed for, for a Scarlet Canon. It was not canon, then I could see that too, but it is canon, so. Which, which kind of makes you wonder what the army is. Like, what SCP is the army? Uh, the really BTS. Yes, but I, uh, I'm guessing if there was an army, it would probably be. And that's just oh terrifying. yeah, that. Oh yeah, that one story where like peanut could multiply. Well, there's what always now? been. It's always Sorry. been uh, that they could multiply. That's not a recent thing. They Wait, what? what? Yeah. They could always multiply. That was never a recent thing. Why? I don't remember that being in the original article. Like that was the first SCP. Not the first SCP, just one of the first. But yeah, the multiplying thing was always part of its lore. Yeah. What? It was just in one of the. It was just always in the side stories, not in the main. Yeah. It's never been in the main. It's always been in the side articles. Also, wait, like Peanut, as in like SCP one. Yeah, the statue that like literally was the very first SCP. Like, the the source of SCP was someone writing that article and putting it on 4chan. And then people just started doing that as well until it snowballed into what we have now. Yeah, that is true. Which is also why we had to go through a manual expelling of fucking fascists from the SCP Foundation because it started on 4chan. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.